All right, so just to show you where we're at at the beginning of this tutorial, currently I can run my guy around, but when I hold the spacebar, he shoots far too many rockets. So I'm going to close this without playing the game any further and t check out my object guy. When I hit the space bar, maximize that, close that. When I hit the space bar, it just creates object ro rocket relative to where I am. And I can just do it all day long. So what we're going to do is create a variable that allows us to shoot and then turns off our ability to shoot for a little bit and then turns it back on after a timer has gone off, like a stopwatch or an alarm clock. Okay, so we're going to add event on the create event, and this is new, we're going to set a variable. Now, anything that's a square means it's going to change a variable. A variable is just a made up word, and you can assign it any number or word that you want. So you're going to learn in algebra that x could equal 2 or y could equal 12. Okay, it sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. I'm going to set I'm going to make up a variable on my create event. And I'm going to call it can underscore shoot. I don't like to use spaces in computer programming. Now, should he be able to shoot right when it he is created? Yes. And in code, 1 means yes. 0 means no. And it's not relative, it's just one. So can shoot, which means yes. He does have the ability to shoot. So as soon as the player hits the space bar, <clears throat> instead of just shooting right off the bat, we're going to have the program check and see if you're allowed to shoot. So we're going to have it test a variable, and we're going to put that before that. The variable we want it to test is can shoot. In other words, if they're allowed to shoot, if can shoot is equal to 1. Remember, this is an if. If they're allowed to shoot, then create a bullet. Okay. Now, that'll work, and it'll just continue to let them shoot. So after they've shot a bullet, we need to turn off the ability to shoot. Not for very long, but just for a little bit. So after it's created one rocket, we should probably turn off that ability to shoot. So can shoot is now, oops, is now zero. Can shoot equals zero. Okay, you following? When I hit the space bar, if can shoot is equal to one, make a bullet or a rocket. Then turn off the ability to shoot. Now, if I don't ever turn it back on, you're gonna be able to shoot once and that's it. That's not very fun. So, we're also going to set an alarm clock. You ever make cookies? When that alarm clock goes off, we get the cookies out and fun begins, right? Yeah, we love cookies. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set an alarm clock. This is a very short alarm clock, but it's under the main two section under timing. So, we're going to say number of steps. Now, just keep in mind there are roughly 30 steps in one second. So if you want it to be delayed for one second, and I'm just going to just put in 30, you might, you're going to probably put a smaller number than that, depending on how far apart you want your bullets to be spaced. I'm going to put in 30 just for demonstration. Now we have a lot of alarms. These are all alarm clocks hanging on the wall. We could set any one of them. I'm going to just leave it at alarm zero. So this alarm clock is set. Currently he's not able to shoot, but my alarm is set. Now. When it goes off, what should happen? Peyton? Um, they should be able to shoot again. Right. We're going to turn on that variable to shoot back to 1. And that is going to be an event, that alarm going off. So I'm going to say, in the event that that alarm 0, and just by choosing alarm 0 as an event, what we're saying is, in the event that alarm 0 goes off. Okay, the alarm's ringing. What should happen? We need to, Peyton, I won't be able to shoot again. how do I do that? How do I allow him to shoot? Make another variable. We set the variable again. Very good. We already have the variable from the initial create event, so we just need to change the variable or set the variable. And we're going to set the variable can shoot back to 1. Now, assuming they're still holding the space bar, this is the path that the game will take. 
it's going to read our code like this. A game or this object guy is created, right? So this only happens once, right at the create event. And the game says, oh, I see you have a variable called can shoot, and it's equal to 1. Well, it doesn't do anything yet. It's just turned on. Then the player hits the space bar. The game says, ah, I need to do this. If can shoot is equal to 1, well, is it? Yes, it is. Okay, so it does the next thing. Create a rocket right at your player. Okay, did it. Next. Set variable can shoot to 0. Oh, okay. So I turn that back off. And we dial up the alarm clock. We twist the little alarm knob for 30 steps, which is basically one second. Okay, and then the game happily moves along. And then one second later, this alarm starts going off. And it does whatever its actions are. In this case, turning the ability to shoot back on. And then the player hits the space bar again, and it starts all over again. Okay, so it goes through this cycle. That's called a loop. Okay, you've created a loop. So as they're hitting the space bar, let's go check it out. Let's see if it works. Oh, something didn't work. All right, it didn't work the first time, so I think we might need to put some blocks inside here. That triangle there and there. See how it indented everything? In other words, if can shoot is equal to 1, it's going to try and do everything inside of that block there. Let's try this again. There we go. So every space, or every second, it's shooting. Now, let's say I want my rockets closer together. All I have to do is dial the alarm clock back. Let's put it at 15. Hit OK, play it. Now I can shoot this fast. Let's say you want it a little bit faster, not much, just a little bit. We change our alarm. Let's put it at uh, 8, for instance. OK, let's test it. Now I can shoot this fast. Now, isn't that much better than that overlapping rockets? OK. Now, it doesn't hurt that guy, but you already know how to do that. You could just say when rocket collides with enemy, enemy gets recycled or destroyed. Now, somebody else was asking, how do we make the enemy shoot? Well, now that we know how to do alarms, uh, I'll do that in my, my next video. Let me finish this one.